Virginia Woolf describes the teenage writings as Jane Austen practicing. I think because Woolf herself, and we of course mainly as readers, will come to the teenage writings after we've read a couple of the major adult fictions. Usually, of course, it's Pride and Prejudice and Emma, but in fact, they're very good places to start to begin to understand what's going on in the teenage writings. They're not designed for publication. There was no expectation in Austen's lifetime or indeed for some time thereafter that they would be published, which is not to say that they are private writings. They were shared among a circle of family and friends and they were designed for performance and enjoyment by that group, a boisterous group that consisted in large part of other young people, which perhaps accounts for some of the subject matter, the flirtation, the drink, um, all the jokes about disrespecting your elders, um, for running away from home, for stealing, all of the kind of criminal um, motifs that run through the work and indeed the overt lack of uh, respect for authority of, of other kinds, like for instance other published texts, um, schoolroom texts, histories, conduct books, uh, books that tell girls and boys how to behave. These are writings that delight in taking all of that kind of advice and junking it. There are two ways you can go as a teenage writer. You can write confidentially, sort of secret things into your private diary, kind of Adrian Mole sort of approach to writing, or you can show off. And she goes the second way. She's a great show off. She wants to show off what she's read, what she knows, simply how clever she is in family performance. One way of thinking about Virginia Woolf's comment on these texts as Jane Austen practising might be in terms of her thinking about or rehearsing for the role of an author and her sense of what an author might be and do and indeed get away with. Um, these three volumes look like printed texts, or at least they're impersonating the form of printed text, volume the first, volume the second, volume the third, um, as you see the published novels will eventually appear in that form. Um, but also the, the name uh, or the character of the author is a very prominent one in these texts, in the dedications, the elaborate formal apparatus that she gives these stories, and indeed the idea of the author or the historian in the case of her spoof history of England as someone who is partial, prejudiced and ignorant someone who can tease the reader and mock the reader, get away with things and trick you, and might not necessarily be a consistent or reliable or trustworthy figure at all. We know that the whole family loved novels of every kind, um, and she's taking it all, and she's exploring it, she's pulling it apart critically, she's making fun of it, she's imitating it. She was a great mimic, I think, um, a mimic with her pen. She's interested in observing liberated girls actually liberated girls going wild <laughs>